Hey guys, this is Kex from Kex Co. <coughs> am I recording? Yes, I am. So, a lot of you guys have been asking for a... T Why is... What? Oh. A lot of you guys have been asking, Hey, Jonna. I got this. You got this? Look. Hmm. So a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do a tutorial on how to anime with Mind Reader ever since I released the what the the second clip of uh, Toot. Ever since I released the second clip of uh, True Love. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do just that. So what I tend to do is if say that I want to do an animation where. It's just kind of ambience of the person looking around, so I'm just gonna quickly grab a random skin here. Let's do um, let's do uh, why it's taking so long? Let's just do this. Okay, I have no idea, but. Anyways, let's just say you want to do a randomization of someone looking around. So, what I tend to do is I tend for their starting position to not be the default starting position where they're perfectly symmetrical. I actually kind of I make what I call a wall of keyframes at the start, which is basically what it says, a wall a wall of keyframes. So just kind of move the the arms and bends into a casual position. You gotta, for, for me, I affect every part of the body except for the hat, usually. So I can move the head around, body too, bend it back a little bit. Or bend it forward, but then lean it back, and then the feet I spread apart a little bit, so spread kind of like that, and then more like that. Bend, send it forward. And this a little more back. You gotta make sure it's a position that a real human could stand in without falling over. So that's that's casual enough, isn't it? So I also gotta make that. So just double click that human down that human keyframe down here. And there you have your wall of keyframes. That's a wall of keyframes. So it's basically it basically sets the position for when you want to start the next movement. So say that I want to have her look around. So I will start with her looking to the um, the the right, and then I'm gonna move the this the slider a little bit. Actually, no, I'm gonna make a wall keyframes here, and I'm gonna move the shift the body a little bit so that way she's looking around add a few little adjustments to the body so that way it looks like she's not standing perfectly skill still same with the arms you don't have to create a full wall of keyframes just for the the parts that'll move if it's anything above the body it's you, you don't keep it stationary and then uh just create a wall there too just that a little bit that. Now here's what I usually do. I usually select them all and change the keyframe transition to ease in and ease out. So it looks more like this. Now here's the special thing that I this is this is my secret. I'm gonna tell you my secret. So instead of having them all end at one point, I have them actually all end at different time parts on the timeline. So I shift the keyframes around a lot, just to make it more. And you also have to move this too. One second. You also have to move that wall of keyframes a little bit as well. So just move that around to your heart's desire. It doesn't matter where. It's just make sure they're spread out. It doesn't look like much, but 
Uh, and then uh, if you're going to have a pause moment, I tend to make sure that the character never stays still, like perfectly still. Cause, so maybe make it mo make her move a little bit. Do some head movements or arm movements. Same thing when you're done with the keyframes, just spread them out. See? So now you got that really nice looking uh, motion. Uh, I tend to like the, um, the faster turning a lot more. So one second. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Get ahead. Move a little closer. There we go. That's better. And then same here, don't uh, create another wall of key frames except not like full wall. Create a, um, I don't know what to call those like, but they're just like semi wall, like just part, partially a wall sort of. So look around. Add some bends to the body. And now if you wonder how I get most of my shots, like the shots for cameras and stuff, I learned that in my media class that I take in school, or high school. It's really helpful. Yeah, you gotta move these a little closer together. Especially these ones, because you, you, don't, you don't want it to be slow. That's one mistake that I had when I first started animating. All my animations moved way too slow. For example, Lost Love, that was pretty slow. I think the slowest animation I had was um, First Love. So there. She's moving around, looking. So. And then you do the same thing. Um, and I, I, I like to call it an idle animation, which is where it's just the, the part where it's like the pause, except she's not exactly staying perfectly still. So let's just uh, add that there. Add the head tilt. Oh god. No, I don't want it to move that far. And then look up. Did I already? Yeah, I did. Okay, now same thing. Spread them apart. The only time where you should have your keyframes all end in one area is at the end of your animation either the start or the end so now we have that nice uh, idle animation <coughs> and uh, so let's say that um, now you want to do just where she kinda ends back its position so now what you want to do is you want to reset the blue keyframe to zero maybe adjust it a little bit so it's not actually no set it to zero um, what I tend to do is I never keep this bend part set to I never keep it at zero I never keep it at below negative or above negative one or below one I always keep it above or below like I always keep it out of zero or one so And whenever I do a bend, I move the I like move the body a little bit depending on if it's idle or if it's a like an actual movement, an action move, an act, uh, an action movement. So now uh, let's move that head a little bit. Maybe move the arms a little bit to the side. Add some bends, move them around. Okay, and then again, spread them apart. The 
Let's see this way. I didn't get to see that. Uh, yeah. So you get that right. Now you wanna. I want to do. What I tend to do is I tend to add a pause between each movement, unless it's like them running or they're like fighting or something. If they're just simply like just kind of looking around or if they're about to wave or something, I tend to just add a pause movement, make their movements more realistic. So another idle animation, maybe tilt the head a little more to the opposite direction. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Okay. How long is that? Alright, so it's about 10 minutes long. Alright, and then, um... Uh... Yeah, I... Also, oh, one important note. I learned this, um... From experience. Um, if you notice that... Well, say okay, so let's let's do a, a test or a wall a, a keyframe uh, fence here. That's what I call it. It's just it's, it's like a, it's a keyframe that just sets the movement. So let's say that let's say that you want to do a bending animation, right? And you notice that the bend doesn't start until the middle of the keyframe. That's because you 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 probably have it set to negative into the negatives for the arm or the leg or something. Oh, if you if you don't want the keyframe to start right away, set it to if you want the keyframe to start like right when the right away. If you want the movement to start right away, set the bend to 0. Other than this, where if you notice the keyframe like it it doesn't start until after oh well, like about until it gets like halfway through. It's because it's it's at the negatives and the negative it can't it can't bend backwards. That's impossible. But set it to zero and then it will be much easier. I have a problem with that a lot. Sometimes I just do it. Sometimes I actually set it to zero because I need to, or set it past zero. Sorry, because I need to. But most of the times I don't. Okay, I gotta fix these arms. They're bugging me. So. Whatever looks comfortable to you, like, try not to have them in the default, like, Steve position, kind of like here, up here, up, up, up from here. Try not to have them in this default position, because that just doesn't look, look right. Always have them in a, a nice casual position, and uh, make sure your keyframes are spread apart, unless you want them to, unless you want to stop, unless you... Well, unless you have legitimate reason to have the keyframes not spread apart. Now we want to do a... I think uh, that's good for, like, idle and looking around stuff. But uh, now we do the camera work. What I tend to do is I tend... Because now in the new update you can find the shot you want, right? So I want to get the shot from the... Gr uh, actually, like, from back here, right? Okay, let's get this out that. I tend to like it when the black bars are on the bottom. So, you don't have to do what I'm doing, but I just it just feels more cinematic for me when I do this. Gosh, it's way too wide though. There we go. All right, so now we add the camera. So, here's the camera. So, set up your position. And there, it's set. So that you can see the camera now. What you can do is you can make it sideways. So it's like that. Make it upside down. Who gives two farts? Um, oh, 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 whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So now you want to click this button down here the preview render scene and high quality but so just basically the Steve with the shadow now you'll be able to see what it looks like when you render it so this is you need to do this to see what the depth of field so you click on depth of field in the camera section and uh, depending on where it is you click foreground or background I tend to just do custom what do you call it like custom uh, custom work for this 
some depth. All right, like I just don't, I never use the presets. I always make it myself. Uh, maybe we can move, zoom this in a little bit better because it's a little off. Just zoom that in, tilt that up. All right, so now we have the idling animate. So. So yeah, now you have that. Now what you want to do is you want to click export animation to .avi file and stuff like that, right? Now here's where it um, gets a little tricky. Uh, most people don't have tr uh, have problems rendering it, um, but um, here's what you want to do. The HDV, I believe, is for full screen? No, it's not. Oh, wait. HD. Okay. HDV 180p is for, or HDV 180 is for full screen, or just kind of square. Uh, HDV, HD 180 is, um, is for just regular movie thing. So, uh, I don't know what this, uh, that I, yeah, that's a given, like, you don't really want to include that. So, um, you make sure, if you, depending on what, if you want to make a, a GIF, or a, a GIF, doesn't matter, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, depending on whether you want to make a GIF, or, uh, an actual video file, you click one of these. AVI is video file, GIF is PNG sequence. PNG sequence, you ought to save into a folder, not into, like, your desktop, like, not directly onto your desktop or anything, because it's going to give you, like, 300 photos or something like that. So I'd recommend AVI if you're just going to do a video file. Um, I usually do save advanced, but here you can just do save. Save it wherever you want, and then click save. So let's say, uh, I'm a jolly old mate. Right? And now it's going to be rendering. So for me, I'm going to cancel. And it will say how long it will take. Um, crap. Oh, and for the... Ugh, I can't... Okay. Also, one more thing. For the frame rate, keep it at 30. If you, you don't want it any higher because... or You don't want it any higher because... YouTube uh, limits frame rates to 30 frames per second anyways. So I wouldn't recommend going any higher. It's just gonna make it's just gonna take up more memory. But yeah, that was my tutorial on my animator animating. Um yeah. Thanks guys and I'll see you later. Bye.